Well, hello again. In this example, you will learn how to conduct an approximate analysis of an indeterminate truss. We're going to look at this particular truss, which incidentally, if you did compute, you would find that it's statically indeterminate to the second degree. But what we are being asked to do for this approximate analysis is assume that the diagonals that are in compression can only take one-fourth of the panel shear. That is to say, that there's going to be a certain amount of shear present in this panel, and we are saying that one of those members will take a fourth of it, one of the diagonal members will take three-fourths of it. So to do this, it would be helpful if you just made a cut across the panel and sketch a free body diagram for it. We're going to go ahead and get this complete free body diagram sketched out here. Here's N A C, and this is N BD. Observe here that the slope of the members can be described as this one-on-one -on -one slope. So 1 over the square root of 2 is what we will use to get the components. So let's go ahead and sketch those in here for the diagonals. We've got these components here. Let's just go ahead and get this sketched. 1 over square root of 2 times n a d and 1 over the square root of 2 times n a d. And then likewise for this 1 over square root of 2 n b c 1 over square root of 2 n b c. That's our free body diagram. But remember, in the approximate analysis, what we were instructed is that one of those diagonals should take one-fourth of the total load, whereas one of the diagonals should take three-quarters of the total load. So what I'm going to just write here is that NAD and NBC will each take a certain proportion. I'll first start by stating that NAD will be the one that takes a fourth, NBC will be the one that takes the three-fourths, and once you find that, we can then write a relationship here that says NAD is equal to negative one-third NBC. Where does the negative come from? Well, we know that one of those members is going to be in tension, one is going to be in compression, so there's the opposite in sign. We also recognize that the ratio of one-third comes from here, the numerators. So the really big question in all of this is how do you know which of these members was in compression and which one was in tension? We would like to think that maybe just by observation you could identify that, but if you are uncertain, just go ahead and take a look at what the horizontal components are doing for you here. If you have a component that is acting in the same direction of these loads, it'll be that component which is in compression, and then the one that is acting in the opposite direction of the applied load will be the one in tension. So with that, we can now assemble the equilibrium equations, and we will do so by summing the forces in the x-direction. Here is the equation for sum of forces in the x-direction. You will notice that with that you have two unknowns, NAD and NBC. So we will then want to plug in an expression that will relate those two. So you'll notice that what we've done is we've gone ahead and substituted in that expression and now that entire equation is written in terms of that force NBC and we can go ahead and solve for that being 21.21 kips. It is a positive value which then means that bar force is in tension and then using our relationship and AD we can solve for that be a negative 7.07 .07 kips. It being negative tells me that that bar force is in compression. Then I can go ahead and finish out the remainder of the equilibrium equations, summing moments about A, as you are seeing here, plugging in my known expression for NBC, will then tell me that I am 15 kips here in compression and then I can sum moments about point B, which will now give me NAC. That will be 5 kips, being positive. That is in tension. To move along, I would then just come back into this next panel. I would make another cut, 
and sketch the free body diagram for it. So here's that free body diagram, recognizing that my diagonal members are the NCF and NDE terms. So I can then sum forces in the X direction, which is what we've got going on here. And we then come up with a similar relationship, remembering that one of those is going to be a third of what the other is. We can substitute that into the sum of forces in the X direction and solve for NDE, which will be 42.42 kips. That is in tension because it is positive. And then we can compute the other one. That will be negative 14.14 kips. And that, of course, is in compression. Take those known quantities, and we can finish out the equations of equilibrium, summing moments about point C, would then give me negative 50 kips, and then summing forces in the y direction would give me 30 kips, that being in tension. And that concludes the approximate analysis of this truss. Remember, it's always a beautiful day to study structures.